Google ads can get complicated. There's dozens of campaigns, dozens of different strategies, and everyone's telling you conflicting advice and different things to do. You may have set up your account and have three search campaigns, five performance max campaigns, a standard shopping campaign. Everything feels like it's all over the place, but I am here to tell you that that is not the way you should set things up, especially if you are spending less than $30,000 a month. Now, if you're spending over $30,000 a month or just around that range, you might have to get a little bit more complex. But in today's video, I'm going to break down a client that we work with that basically spends between 20 and $40,000 a month. And this is the absolute best setup to get the best returns in Google ads right now for you to copy as well. We are looking at an account that has spent around $19,000 in the last 30 days that has driven $92,000 in sales from that 19 K spend. That's at a 4.83 return on ad spend. It's all been done at a 2.23 conversion rate, which is completely achievable for any successful e-commerce brand. And now I want to be mindful of one thing. Don't get worried about fancy brand campaigns, non-brand setups. All of this stuff is great to have long-term, but it's really not great to have if you're just starting out or if you're under a million dollars in revenue where your brand name is not widely recognized. So don't overcomplicate things because as a result, you're going to confuse the algorithm so much and it's literally going to have no idea where to spend your money properly. So everything we do here is just condensing, but also having levers for you to pull. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. We have a standard shopping campaign and a performance max campaign. Now, the first thing you might say is why would you have a standard shopping campaign if you already have a performance max campaign? It is very simple. The standard shopping campaign for nearly nine out of 10 brands when in conjunction with the performance max campaign works better. The individual performance of the OG shopping or the standard shopping campaign might be slightly worse than the performance max campaign. But when you look at your overall ROAS, it is likely to improve by running them both at the same time. Looking at the settings, first and foremost, let's make sure our tracking is right. Do not use your account goal settings. Account goal settings could easily get messed up. It's very, very common that you add new conversions events and you start double counting, triple counting, have high repeat rates. We just want to make sure we're selecting the correct campaign specific goal. Here, it's the purchase event. We can see very clearly that we are recording our purchase Google ads. These two are secondary events, so they don't count. Once we drive down a little bit, you're just going to have to make sure that your Google Merchant Center account is properly connected to your Google ads account. In this case, I know this number here is representative of the correct Google Merchant Center account. Therefore, I know the right products are syncing. Feeds should be United States, store locations, all locations. Budget is going to be dependent on your budget. You need to set your target to whatever your break-even ROAS is at first. That's the way you're going to scale the quickest. So think about what is my product cost and what could I actually afford at the bare minimum? That's what you should be setting your target ROAS as to start. A few weeks might go by and you might be in the position where you could actually start to move it up. In this case, we have about a 400% return on ad spend goal, which is why we actually set this to 450 because if it drops a tad bit under, we're still happy with the performance of things. Moving down to locations, we just do not target Hawaii in this case, which is why I've broken out all of the locations into states, but you could even do this easier by just targeting United States. And then the key here is this setting right here for targeting your location. Do not take the Google recommendation. If someone is, let's say in India or someone is in a completely different country and they are often doing searches in the United States, or maybe they visit the US once a year or twice a year, they could fall into this bucket for people who have shown interest. We want to sell to people who we definitively know reside in the United States or within your target country. So make sure that at all times you have presence in or regularly in targeted locations. I'm just going to cancel that because I don't want to make any changes. Automatically created assets. This definitely depends. If you have a very complicated brand, if your brand is an individual product that is unique to the market, I would not allow these expansions. I would just simply untick these and just let it go. However, in our case, we're selling a fashion brand. This is mostly a retailer. In this case, totally fine. We are very comfortable with allowing these text assets and final URL expansions to happen for automatically created assets. Moving down to the additional settings, you don't need to do anything for your start and end dates. Our campaign URLs do not need to be set because we use a tracking template at the account level. And then we do not exclude any brands. The only time you'd want to exclude brands is if your brand name for some reason is very, very similar to a different word that's used very often. For example, if you for some reason are selling glasses and you want to avoid glass cups and there's a brand name for glass cups that often comes up in your brand search, you could just simply exclude brands here. But in our case, we don't have to worry about that. And when we look in here, as I promised, and we go to our asset groups, we have one core asset group based on everything on the left side here. We do run individual asset groups when there's a new sale happening. But in the case of what's happening on an evergreen basis, we have 
have one primary asset group. Now I'm gonna dig in here and I understand that some of this is gonna be blurred out, but what I just wanna call out, the most important thing is that we're using at minimum five headlines. We're using all our long headlines. We are using all of our descriptions. We have all 20 of 20 images. We have one, our core logo. We have our business name. We have zero videos. This is super important. Do not include videos in your Performance Max campaign. They will just allow spend to go onto YouTube. Everything else can be pretty generic. We have account level site links, an automated call to action, automated promotion links here, which in this case are just paused down. As we move forward, we're gonna take a look at the OG shopping campaign. Looking into these settings, again, campaign goal specific to purchases, no change there. We're making sure our merchant center is correct. For bidding, generally we wanna keep the target ROAS for standard shopping about 10 to 20% under the target of the Performance Max campaign. This is gonna give it a little bit more wiggle room to spend in shopping. For our budget, we have noticed that if you set your campaign priority too high just for your standard shopping campaign, it will get significantly more spend and put pressure on that Performance Max campaign, which is exactly what we wanna do. For your networks, do not include Google search partners. That's not what we wanna do with this shopping campaign. And then everything else is exactly as discussed before. Probably the most important part of this entire video is the breakdowns and the levers that we have within our OG shopping campaign. This philosophy that I'm about to break through can also be used on the shopping and performance max side of things as well. We, in this case, just use it for standard shopping because that's what we found to be most successful for this client. The first thing you're gonna notice is instead of just having one ad group in standard shopping, which is very, very typical these days, we actually have four evergreen ad groups here. Each of these are broken out by different tiers of products that the client sells. So on the very bottom, we have a sale campaign. So this is just hitting products that are on sale right now. This is a very small percentage of their catalog. We have a low campaign. This is products under a certain threshold. So for this client, it's actually under a hundred bucks. We consider low. Next, we have our medium campaign. That's between 100 and $500 products. And then we have high, which is $500 plus. The big advantage of doing it this way and not just grouping everything together is that we could set target ROAS adjustments per each ad group and not let Google just run wild. In our case, we're actually really fortunate because we could set low to 450 and you can see it's actually hitting the 450. The sale is set to 300. It's actually hitting 500%, which is fantastic to see. But really the core of this account is the high and medium. This is where we're getting our highest average order values, highest lifetime values, overall just our best customers are coming from here and we are driving the most profitability from these segments. Now, what you'll notice is our cost per conversion is directly correlated to the price point. The high $500 plus price point costs us $200 plus to acquire that customer. But the major advantage there is that customer converts at a 6X ROAS. We spend a dollar, we make six back on this segment. Same thing for medium, $163 in the last 30 days to acquire a customer here, but we're getting $3 back for every dollar we spend here. Generally speaking, I would like this medium to be a little bit higher. I'm not really too concerned with it. We're hitting every single goal for this client way above our mark. In this case, it's not that big of a deal, but if it continues to trend in the wrong direction, really get under that three, that's going to draw a big red flag on our side. And we're going to have to adjust a tiny bit on this strategy. The real core here is that you segment out your product set. So if you're running 30, 40 or hundred catalogs or a thousand products in your catalog, make sure they're broken out by either price point, by your average order value. They could even be broken out by your contribution margin. If you're a fashion brand, you might easily just say, well, I'm going to put men's stuff in one category, women's stuff in another category, sweatshirts in a category, shoes in a category, pants in a category. That might work, but I bet you it works because the price points of those products are so similar and not because the products themselves are similar. And if you do this, let me know how it goes in the comments below. Otherwise, I will be seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much.